All right, well, as we make our way towards the end of this chapter, yeah, I think this, this next page is going to do a good job of, of kind of tying a bow on the topic of non-primitive data types. I've been discussing these, these string objects so far, saying that a, a string is something from the Java libraries. I've talked about the string being special in that you, use, you can use new to declare it. I've talked about the fact that with a string, you put a dot afterwards and you can call things like equals or two uppercase or length. Well, this page maybe will help us a little bit more with being more precise as to what we mean by non-primitives. Well, I guess the first question I'd have for you is, uh, what's a primitive? Can you list for me the eight primitive data types? Eight primitive data types. Stop the video if you want, take out a scratch piece of paper, write down what are the names of those eight built-in primitive data types. All right, well, you might remember that we have uh, byte, short, int, and long. Those, are the, those four are uh, integer types. Then we have two floating points, single precision and double precision, float and double. We also have char, and we also have boolean. Those eight built-in primitive types are part of the Java language. They always start with a lowercase letter. They have default values, especially if they're used in something like an array or as a, as a field. Well, anything that's not a primitive, basically everything else in Java, is defined as a class. And so far, string has been our non-primitive data type. But we're going to see a lot more non-primitives as we go further in this class, especially in later chapters. You'll be creating your own even. So you have a class. So there's this class out in the documentation called string, class string right there. and. Uh, there's a bunch of them already in Java, in the Java libraries. Over on the far left, where I found string before, where's string at? Here it is, string. There's many more in here as well that we'll use at a later time. There's one called math that'll come in handy in another chapter or two, for example. Well, if you're working with something that's a class, we're going to find that at runtime, some value representing that class is called an object. So the word James is an object of string, and Gosling is an object of string. Well, how is that different from a primitive? For one, objects are built at runtime, and they live out in memory in a section of memory called the heap, this dynamically allocated chunk of memory. I've been drawing boxes and putting the strings in them. Those are these things that live out in memory. Secondly, when your Java code wants to work with an object, it uses what's called a reference. Or I've been using the word pointer a little bit here, address. So you have your variables that point to or reference an object. And the other thing to mention here is that if you have a variable of, of class type, a variable of type string, it doesn't store a string class in it, but rather this runtime thing with values in it, this, this object thing. So James Gosling uh, that has real contents, those letters inside of it that you can call, call methods on it. Don't worry too much about this page, folks. I mean, if you haven't done OO before, uh, this is just the, just the beginning of our uh, talks about things like objects here. We're going to have a full chapter when we get to chapter 8 on object-oriented programming. And then when we get to chapter 9, we'll start using that new keyword a lot more and creating our own objects and the like. But we wanted to give you just a little bit more precision here about what object versus strings and primitives and non-primitives. Uh, it's, it's the beginning as we make our way forward. Uh, the book also mentions some interesting things about strings. Strings are, are special in that the plus sign can be used for concatenating and the double quotes can be used for literals. That, that's a special thing about a string object. Another special kind of object is an array object. And it's special in that you can use those square braces to access, to index in, and get and uh, retrieve values from it. Um, so those things, yeah, they, they're coming from the uh, from Java itself, arrays and string, and they have a bit of special treatment by Java. I guess because we use them so often. If you wanted to run uh, the example here, feel free. It's called concat.java. It's just reminding us that we can use that plus sign 
to concatenate uh, uh, strings in Java. It expects you to pass in command line arguments, it looks like, uh, two of them at least in order to run.